Well, it's been too long since we've been here. Welcome back, everyone, to Hope Island Zoo. Hope you guys are all having a wonderful day today. And today, we're going to take some time just to go on a little bit of a tour of the island so far and check out what we actually have done and kind of talk about the future of Hope Island and CSU as a whole. So... We have a lot to actually jump into today, so I'm just going to plop us down here in case if you guys aren't already aware, in case if this is your first video in the series. Hope Island Zoo is what is currently our ZSU project, and in case if you guys don't know what ZSU is, it's currently the online role-playing server for zoo games and zoo community. So essentially, you sign up with what you consider to be like a starting zoo layout and you kind of build up from there you get to trade with other people you get to buy different animals and stuff like that that's essentially how it goes and we kind of built this entire zoo off of 15 species and now we're finally up to 40 different species on hope island so without further ado we're just going to get started talk about some updates i'm going to be pointing some stuff out along the way that um you know like blueprints and stuff this one's by zz it's just a little bit of a doxai little grab and go kind of eatery we have evens right over there and i do apologize you're going to be noticing this a lot in like the more built up areas for some reason my computer does not like to render textures once you start to place too many things in one area. So you will notice some kind of like drained out kind of looks to some things. I will apo I do apologize on that. Those will be fixed once I actually do upgrade my computer. Uh, the last part should be coming in from China relatively soon. So we will have that all set and ready for us relatively soon. But for the time being, we're just going to have to manage. Uh, we should probably talk about ZSU and why we're actually going to be taking a small break from Hope Island Zoo. Unfortunately, breeding is still not working and Avi, uh, who essentially runs the whole shebang alongside Alyssa, is experiencing some personal problems right now. I still have these trash cans out there. I have no idea why. Um, and the whole upgrade slash migration of the entire server over to like, you know, the specific regions is unfortunately delayed. And that also means that breeding is delayed as well. So that's quite unfortunate, but we completely understand. If you guys do want to donate to Avi, oh. it is linked in the ZSU server. I will have a link to the ZSU server in the description of this video. So definitely be able to check that out. That one is by just Goran, I think. I don't really know. Uh, I have to give a quick little shout out to all of our blueprint and mod makers over here we're just going to go through them really quickly uh all these builders have helped us make hope island the beautiful facility that it is now and we got to give them all huge thanks for their contributions whether it be through blueprints through mods or even just by mental support in some cases especially with forge right there um but yeah that's essentially all of our friends who helped us along the lines but yeah, we should probably check out this in here. That one, that sign over there is by Lion. He was one of the first influencers, quote unquote, that kind of joined ZSU when we all kind of quote unquote rated it. So that's something to keep in mind right over there. But yeah, going back to circling back where I was talking about earlier. If you guys do want to donate to Avi, be sure to check that out in the ZSU server. I'm not going to link it directly because, you know, I feel kind of weird about doing that, but be sure to check it out. I, that's my, like, healthy endorsement, if you could kind of put it like that. Gotta give Keyboard Keeper a whole bunch of praise and thanks for our beautiful little stuffies all around here. A bunch of kangaroos and stuff. We're using those in place of wallabies. We have a lot of safari pack props and the flamingo pack props right there as well. Just a whole bunch of awesome plushies in our little gift store. I kind of imagine this to be a lower scale gift store so they probably have like you know animal taxidermy that you know maybe the owner has had from a while ago and stuff like that. Again you can kind of see like the blurry textures. I do apologize. Parts coming in soon. Uh, and we also have a bunch of other stuff over here. I essentially kind of started this little coffee corner right here, along with Goron's little coin thingy that you put the coin in and it swirls around. I think that's the exact name of the blueprint, I'm going to be completely honest. But, as you guys can see, this whole starting area really isn't the best. It's not flashy at all, and since Hope Island Zoo has come such a long way, I'm hoping to refactor that soon. So, I consulted Bro Nation. If you guys aren't aware, Bro Nation is another Planet Zoo server, along like, you know, Planet Coaster and uh, Parkitect and stuff like that 
full of people who are dedicated to realism. We're going to make our way over there. Um, so I kind of consulted them, and I have to give a huge shout out to Carlos G, Lion, Remnant, Jash, Citrus Sai, Drivet, and Tobes for their wonderful support and kind of like, you know, critique of Hope Island Zoo. So we're going to be using so much of that to refactor the island. And first of all, this entrance area is going to go, yes. So we're absolutely going to destroy this full welcoming center and build a better one towards the back of the island. That's not the back of the island, that's just a building. Uh, but we'll actually get there when we do get there. Uh, so this is our little main plaza. This was one of the first ones back when Hope Island Zoo was still a kind of rinky-dink kind of operation. And this is kind of the remnants of that. You know, we have this beautiful little um, photo spot that, you know, your guests can kind of pop over here and take their picture in front of. And it'll, it'll be a nice little cherished memory for them. Uh, and yeah, I just thought it'd be really cute to get giraffes there. I thought that was a really awesome uh, statue. It's from the Safari Pack, if you guys aren't aware. Um, that one is by Nicholas Lion Rider. You guys may have heard of him. Uh, we also have, I believe, Ricey sign right there. It's either Ricey or Pond Shrimp. Either one, but they did some really awesome sign work. And this is essentially our starting row, so I forget who actually made these aviaries. They are, like, over in that little blueprint area. I do humbly apologize, but I used a lot of blueprints in here for this zoo, and this one is currently empty. This actually used to host our ring-tailed lemurs, but they've since, as you guys can probably tell, gotten a quite a, sub quite a substantial upgrade. So we'll be checking that over towards the end of the tour. But walking through here, you can notice that we still do have some friends in these areas. We do have our eastern wild turkeys in here. These ones are by Narwhaler. We only have two left, and I do try to name as many of my animals as possible. For example, this one's name is... if I could select it correctly. Yep, that's Martha, and I believe this one is Washington. Did I get that correct? Washington, yeah. So it's Martha and Washington. I thought that was kind of cute. So these guys do make their home nice and happy in here. But I am hoping to kind of refactor this entire area into a more bird paradise. We already have so many birds in our little area, and I definitely do want to expand this area to be a lot more woodsy, a lot more kind of immersive when it comes to all that stuff. We have our red-tailed hawk in here. I believe his name is Steven. I, yeah, I believe his name is Steven. Unfortunately, you can't, I didn't rename the group over there, but his name is Steven. Trust me, I named him after that because Stephen Hawking. Um, we also have this Vista Point right here, so once I actually do let the guests in, which I'm not doing right now because my computer is already slow enough, uh, they could actually view Mr. Stephen Hawking right there. But this is our last edition. Uh, you guys may remember this as the last video that we actually did put out. This is our waterfowl breeding area. I forget where what we're actually calling it. I do want to give it a kind of cute name later down the line. But for the time being, it's just the waterfowl area. That's pretty much what we're going to leave it as. But we have a bunch of areas for guests to kind of relax in. This is a lot more of like a slower paced kind of area of the zoo. It's a really nice place to get some vistas of like, you know, the other side of Hope Island. It's just a really beautiful area, especially um, when you actually do get a view of the lighthouse over there. That's one of my favorites. Um, and we also kind of built this building kind of model after the lighthouse over there i thought it'd be kind of cute to have like a parallel between the two but we should probably talk about the animals that we have in here we have our blue wing teals which are currently out of the water right now i think they're making their way back in there anytime soon or they're just gonna hide in the grass i guess yeah they're here right in the water that's perfect you guys can check them out. These are made by Rihanna. Now, I know these are ringed neck teals. Actually, no, I think it's ring neck teals that I have in the, like, whatever. I don't know. Whatever it is, I'm just using these guys as a placeholder for the species. But what we also have in here are our snow goose. They are named, I think, Anna and Kristoff. Yeah, I think so. Elsa and Kristoff, actually. So, I named them after Frozen, of course. And there's one of them that's our male walking around. And here's our beautiful little female taking a nice little sleep. Oh, I think we woke her up. Oh, well. Uh, so, unfortunately, these guys can't swim. But snow geese don't really swim that often. They more so hang out on the land. Oh, my gosh. 
Look at the other teal. I love him. I think that's Donut, if I'm going to be completely honest. So yeah, the whole idea behind this whole area is because, unfortunately, some guests kind of snuck their way in. And they started feeding our teals some donuts. We could check out that area where we originally had them in just a little bit. But they did feed them donuts, so we kind of had to make them a whole new habitat. But this was a long way coming. I really was so inspired off of Buttonwood Park Zoo uh, to really make a big waterfowl area. And I hope sometime soon that we'll be able to buy even more waterfowl later down the line. I really do love this area. It's such a nice, quiet, calm area that I really hope we get to expand it later down the line. Moving down here, we also have our barn owls. I forget their actual names, so we're just going to pop in here and hopefully we could select them the first go round. I really don't think we are. <laughs> I think one's name is Willoughby and the other I honestly forget. But it's nothing crazy. It's a very simple pre-built aviary. I did put these kind of blinders up there because barn owls typically don't really like the sun. So I did make sure to incorporate as much shade as possible for these guys. I think they really like it. And what we also have over here are our Asian small clawed otters. These guys, I do apologize, I used the giant otter right there, but I think that's fine. Um, these guys are really simple. They don't really require that much, and they're really tiny. Uh, this layout was kind of based off of Lupa Zoo over in, like, you know, what, Springfield, Massachusetts kind of area. I think Ludlow specifically. But I wanted to make sure it was ADA compliant, so we also have a little bit of a handicap space for someone to walk their little wheelchair up into and be able to check these guys out a lot easier. Or, you know, if they're using walking sticks or something like that. It's not just for wheelchairs, guys. But we also have a lot of safety precautions. Precautions, that's a new word. Uh, over here with, like, you know, these steps, making sure the guests don't lose their footing on those little grips right there. And you can get some really awesome views into the habitat. It's nothing crazy. I think I may do a new otter exhibit once we actually work on a reptile slash tropical house. So do keep that in mind. Look at that little guy. He's doing a little bit of a handstand. Oh my gosh, what a little star. Uh, over here was a former porcupine exhibit. Unfortunately, we kind of sent him away all the way over to Forge, and I think he kind of traded him out as well. So, unfortunately, he's no longer with us, but he's probably having the time of his life wherever he is. In here is nothing too crazy. This is our temporary tropical house. I am hoping to break this down relatively soon, but you can kind of see it's very much simple in here. Nothing too crazy. It was just something to throw up really quickly. Uh, in here we have Red Rumped Agoutis and American White Ibis. These guys are made by Bongo and the Red Rumped Agoutis are made by me. <laughs> yeah, I love the Agoutis if you guys can't tell. That guy's just ruining around in his little filth right there. It's so cute. But yeah, that's essentially it for that habitat. I'm really happy with how well like all the decor came out. Uh, gotta give a huge shout out to NDP for his faux rock set. And Nick for the, um, whatever you call this one. I apologize, Nick. The exhibit prop pack. There we go. But yeah, we gotta give a huge shout to those two for some wonderful little props, especially for this exhibit right here. Unfortunately, they are kind of boxed up right now, but we do have two Asian water monitors. We do have a breeding pair, and I am hoping to give them a much better habitat later down the line. This is very much temporary right here. Uh, but it's really a lot more what they need, I'm gonna be completely honest. Asian water monitors don't really require that much space, but I would like to expand it a lot more for them. And we also have two American alligators in here. I believe this one's name is Chandler. And I don't know what we're going to name the girl yet, but we do have one from the Valentine's Day event. I'm not sure if I've reported on that just yet, but we did have one. Uh, hopefully when we actually do, like, make their habitat later down the line, we could actually show off the little press room conference event for that. But that's it for our little temporary tropical house. It's nothing crazy. We will dismantle it soon. But that's essentially all we have right there. Uh, here is our Owl Dad Mountain. These guys, we only have two of them right now. And look at him. He's just in the perfect pose. Okay, you know what? I'm going to do something a little silly. I'm going to put on a filter. I want to use the auto depth of field that we have currently with uh, Ansel. I have not tried it just yet, so I really want to play around with it with you guys. But these guys love their little mountain. It's nothing too crazy. Um, it's very much based off of a lot of the Owl Dad Mountains that we have 
up here in New England, uh, they like to climb on a bunch of stuff, but it's very dead. It's kind of like they threw a bunch of stuff in a habitat, and they kind of left it like that. So that's essentially what we have going on right there. We can see a little jump. Oh my god, I love these guys so much. I think these guys were made by Frazzle, originally by Nick, but Frazzle, like, absolutely mastered it. He gave them such a beautiful, beautiful beard. We need to check that guy out right there. And hopefully our game doesn't crash. <laughs> okay, no, it was just a lick up. There he goes. Oh my god, that's wild. So that's essentially our Owdad habitat. These trees have grown, 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 wow, uh, grown quite a bit since we last put them in. So I'm very happy to see how much they're progressing. And we also have our tufted capuchin habitat in here. It's nothing too crazy. These guys have a pretty sizable habitat. Um, for the time being, I would like to upgrade them later down the line to have a room in the tropical house. Maybe we could do something fun over there. But they are all boxed up right now. Let me actually take care of that all. I hate having all these guys boxed up, but I don't know how they keep on escaping. It's pretty annoying. Um, so I'm just gonna unbox all animals. And hopefully we can actually watch them jump around. There's one lying down on the ground right there. These guys are probably one of my favorite mods. I know you guys probably have the Riverbend tour coming up soon. Or it already came out. Um, but I still do love these guys. Oh my gosh. Yeah, easily one of my favorite mods I've ever made. So that's it for their habitat. Again, nothing too crazy. Just a bunch of those pre-built aviary decorations going on. Uh, and we're coming up on our fox habitat, but I do want to show off that quick little um, pond over here. So if you guys remember, this was our Dinosaurs Among Us trail. Uh, unfortunately, we did get rid of it, but I'm pretty happy that we did because it was kind of tacky. And it was also pretty laggy on my system because we had so many dinosaurs in here. But this was the duck's original pond. And the guests used to be able to access it kind of right through here. As you guys can tell, it's kind of been grown over quite a bit. But they used to be able to feed them right through here. So we kind of got rid of that. Uh, the pond is still here. I didn't really change it out too much. But we will kind of like level this land later down the line. Not really sure what we're going to put. But yeah, that's essentially the plan for there. Also, I'm going to turn off the filter now. Because it is getting kind of annoying. So we will make our way all the way over here. And we're going to hop our way there. In case if you guys don't know, Kai's free, uh, Kai's improved Tejid Cam mod allows you to jump kind of like that. And it's just really cool. I love it. Uh, this is our red fox habitat. We only have one red fox. Um, I think its name is... I don't know. We got to check out her name. This is the Japanese red fox mod specifically. Uh, because we have so many fox mods out, I really did just want to have a bunch a different subspecies so we currently have the kodiak red fox and it doesn't matter she oh bonito that's his name uh so it's nothing too crazy it's just a very simple fox habitat but we will be upgrading that later down the line i do not like it that much anymore uh it was a pretty good habitat for the time being but i'm not a big fan of it anymore so i do want to kind of refactor it into something else we'll see what we can do later down the line that sign is by i believe oh my gosh Haribo, I want to say. Um, I could be completely wrong, but we got to thank him nonetheless because he added a bunch to the zoo. Uh, over here, we have our first view into North American Cougar exhibit. I will hop this fence right here. It's nothing crazy. Uh, we did build this in anticipation for getting cougar cubs from Crocs over at Nibe Crocodile Park. But unfortunately, breeding is a little busted right now, so it'll be a long time until this habitat is actually ready for those guys. Uh, nothing crazy. I really am happy with how well the shadows and like the shading work in here. It really did come out so beautiful in the screenshots, and I'm very proud of it. We'll make our way over to Islands of Color last, because that's my favorite part. But over here, I did just want to show off a little bit more of the cougar habitat. It's very simple. Um, I should probably double wire this up or I make this into glass because unfortunately the cougars do have claws and guests can be pretty stupid. So I want to make sure that everyone stays safe, both the cougars and the guests. But what you guys probably just heard is our male Bactrian camel. Uh, his name is Tuesday and he's about to get a mate in here. 
I haven't really decided on a name for her just yet, but she will be coming relatively soon. But he has a relatively simple habitat over here in reta uh, Retail Row. No, that is Fortnite. Never mind. This is Reject Row, and I kind of set it up for future proofing so we could kind of throw in whatever animals we do get our hands on later down the line. Uh, probably like Hoofstock and stuff, maybe like Clip Spring. Not really Clip Springer, but like Springbok, maybe Zebras or something can fit in these habitats. They're not even fully walled off yet, I have to say. So that is a little unfortunate, but this guy has plenty of room to kind of like trot around in. Plenty of grass to eat. He even has a feeder over there from Leader. Relatively nice habitat for just being a quick one and done. So there we go. We'll check out the aquatic center in just a few seconds, but I do want to show off our little trails of South America. Uh, still no real name for it just yet. I already used the Inca Trail as a name for it so we're kind of throw that out the window because we did use that for Foxborough Zoo but here's our Patagonian Mara exhibit nothing crazy of course these guys are some of my favorite animals in the entire world so I did want to give them a nice little habitat with plenty of room to kind of explore plenty of room to sleep and stuff like that and they have plenty of room to be shown off like the beautiful little animals that they are it's very much based off of, I believe, oh my gosh, which one? Southwick's uh, Patagonia Mara habitat, but it's a lot nicer than that. We're also using the null signs from the Outback Pack to kind of get these little bit of like, you know, animal descriptions. So I am pretty proud of that. So that Outback Pack, listen, Outback Pack news, I should probably tell you guys already, um, Outback Pack. Uh, <laughs> I'm waiting for the next trailer to drop for Planet Zoo, uh, because I don't want it to be overwritten by the hype of the next pack, and I do want to make sure that if it is like an Oceania pack, that I'm able to refactor the trailer and the animals into something else, and make sure that everything all works out in the end, so do keep that in mind. I do apologize. It's been about long enough that I finally get it out for you guys, but I do apologize that it's not out yet. But that's pretty much it on there. We're going to go check out the Guanacos over here. Nothing crazy. These guys have a relatively simple habitat. Uh, these guys are beautiful. I made these. By the way, Jen made the Mars. They're not out yet. Don't even ask. Um, but this is a Guanaco habitat. I love Guanacos so much. I've never seen them in real life, but it's my dream too because I love all camelids. And it'd be really fun to actually get all camelids in this zoo. Hmm. That's something to consider, actually. But it's relatively simple. They have a nice little hillside. Very decorated with, like, the crowberry bushes and everything in here. It's very nice and very bright. And we also do have some tree guards over there. Just to make sure that they don't really break the trees. But we're going to make a quick little jump right down here. And we're going to visit our aquatic center. This guy is probably one of my favorite projects I've ever built in Planet Zoo. It's very simple. Very simple. Um... We have a neon tetra tank in here. I apologize, some of these don't have the actual animals in there because I'm too lazy to actually add them. But the neon tetras make their home in this little tank right here. And we also have a bunch of stuff in here that we should probably talk about. We have a nice little viewing gallery right onto the little stage over there. So you would probably assume that you would have animal presentations down there. You would have like ambassador animals come out and stuff. Uh, that's essentially the goal of this entire area. Again, you guys will know so many washed out textures in here. Again, that's not a problem because of mods. That's not a problem because of anything other than my own computer and being able to handle only so many things at a time. Another thing that we also have in here is a turtle shell. Nothing crazy, just, you know, a little bit of education right there. And we also do have water pipes kind of running through the building, give it a little bit more of an industrial look. I love the skylight in here. In fact, I think I'm going to take a quick little picture. I know that it doesn't really look the finest with, like, all the textures missing, but I'm pretty happy with how well this looks. Oh my gosh, like, look at that. That is so beautiful. Let me just zoom in a little bit with the, my field of view. And we could kind of get a nice snapshot right there. I'm very happy with this build. Uh, hope you guys don't mind me geeking out about my own stuff. But yeah, we have a bunch of fish in here and a bunch of insects. We have channel catfish. We have some giant water bugs that would go in this habitat. I haven't added them in yet, but they are part of the insect pack. We have a blue American lobster in here. 
Uh, we have seahorses in here. We have brook trout. I apologize for a little bit of like the landfall right there. Did some terraforming around this area, so unfortunately it all kind of broke. But over here we also have a blank terrarium. Nothing went in it just yet. And we also have the touch tank. I do apologize, it does look kind of jank right now, but I will fix that later down the line. But we do have some Jonah crabs in there. We have a bunch of like fish in here and sea stars. We got some from Uluru Zoo, thanks to Seth. Uh, we have some bluegills right in there as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. But this would be a nice area to just come relax, watch an animal show, have the kids get involved. But one of my favorite things actually comes out right over here. This is our ocean observatory. This is based off of a little place called Coral World in St. Thomas. I went there when I was a kid and I was extremely inspired once I heard about it again. Once my good buddy San went to go visit there once more. Um, it's a really awesome place that you guys should check out if you're ever in the area. Uh, but it's really cool. So we have this elevator that goes down. But I usually like to take the quicker way and plop down right in the water but essentially down here i will turn off the lights because it's so beautiful at night and you guys can tell it's kind of laggy up here i do apologize but we're gonna pop right in here and this is perfect right in here we did trap little johnny right down here hope his parents don't miss him but he looks really good down here i mean how could you hate a view like this look at all the sea stars but essentially this was kind of a cheap way to get me to incorporate more animals into the zoo because in ZSU, I probably should talk some more about ZSU. This entire thing is based off the ZSU. Um, you only get animals in your zoo that you buy or that you trade or that you were given. Uh, you can't really say, oh, I want a lion now and plop a lion down in your zoo. Uh, essentially what you really need to do is be smart about your trading, be smart about who you're friends with and kind of hope you get lucky with events and stuff like that. So, essentially, I really wanted to get, like, fish in here, like, large striper, sea bass, um, even dolphins sometimes might swim over here. Uh, I really just want to integrate all those animals in some way or another, but why not just bring the zoo over to the animals is what I thought. So, that's exactly what we kind of did. I love this shot right over here. It's so beautiful. It's so chill down here. Um, so, essentially, that's what it kind of does. It gives us a quicker look into the lives of the fish down here and i did do some light decorating have to give a huge shout out to zz for all the beautiful like foliage and stuff all the corals while new england doesn't really have corals all that much i thought it would be fine to kind of integrate that down here as well we even have some out backpack props uh around the corner over here be careful of like the drop off it goes up pretty deep um but over here, you can kind of see we have a giant isopod. Um, we do have artificial reefs over here with the kind of derelict cars. And that's essentially what you'll see a lot of the time when it comes to kind of like, you know, uh, zoo, not zoos, but like reefs trying to repopulate and stuff like that. I also love the view of this building from the outside. I did like this custom siding for it, and I thought it came out so good. It's a whole bunch of little tiny pieces, but it gives it such a beautiful little dimension that just the normal corrugated stuff doesn't really give. And we also have a tiny little native plant area over here, along with some beehives. Just a little bit of education, thanks to Lion, about the beehives over here. I think these were done by Just Goron, so do keep that in mind if you guys are looking for them on the workshop. Now we are nearing our 30 minute marker, so we're just going to pop right over here really quickly. Uh, and check out Islands of Colors. So this is our first major expansion that we had on Hope Island Zoo. It essentially covers all islands across the world and incorporates animals that have a lot of different colors on them. Uh, first and foremost, you guys may notice this building, but we also have some fake palm trees kind of indicating this little tropical area. These are scarlet macaws. I think we only have two left because we have been trading a lot of them away. Uh, these guys are a breeding pair, and they're just here to represent, like, you know, colorful birds and whatnot. I think they look pretty nice. If you guys are hoping to find these guys, they're part of Nick's Birds of the World pack. But what we essentially have going on over here as well, we're going to wait for the lemurs in just a little bit. We have our red-necked wallabies. 
where we kind of threw them in here because not only did we have them, but also because their name is Rednecked. Um, so they're just chilling right over here. They have a beautiful little habitat, and I'm very happy with how well this one came out. It's always the simple habitats that I just end up falling so in love with. We could check them running around right now. Oh my gosh, look at them go, exploring their little habitat. I forget what we actually named these guys. I think they actually had some pretty cute names, uh, if I could just find it. Walter and Beatrice. Yeah, so Wall and B. Wallaby. Uh, thought that was pretty cute. I think that was Forge's idea or someone. But yeah, they tend to really love their little habitat over here. We even have a didgeridoo right over there. Just to let you know, it's Australia. But over here we have all of our lemurs. Do keep in mind they, they might escape kind of like this dude right here. Look at this little man's trying to escape. But over here they have a lot of beautiful climbing frames. It's very much the same thing over and over again. I really didn't want to reinvent the wheel. I have to give a huge shout out to Crocs by the way for the original aviaries of these. I repainted them to make them a lot more colorful but they are such wonderful pieces and you guys can see our ringtails love to escape up there. But we can kind of make our way over here. We even have our naughty and nice sign over there. Uh, a lot of the times with zoos, you'll see a lot of them giving their animals personalities. And let's just say, like, you know, I use this antiquate, 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 an anecdote. There we go. Uh, a while ago when we actually did make this sign, let's just say uh, Julian over there. He did a very good job. He copulated with his, like, breeding pair. Good job. He's on the nice list. Uh, but Fiona or whatever... Uh, she stole food from her partner, and she's on the naughty list or something like that. I don't really know, guys. I'm so tired. I don't do 30-minute videos. And over here, we have our red roughs again. These guys are on the roof. Not really much I can do about that. They will climb these poles nonetheless, but they will always get transported instantaneously back to the start of the habitat. Uh, and last but not least, we have a couple last exhibits. Uh, really quickly, we have our Sumatran short-tailed boas in this little terrarium right here, uh, based off of NDP's faux rock set right there. And these guys are really cool. So we did buy these guys in the auction. In case if you guys don't know, ZSU also does have auctions as well. So it's just a really awesome way to get animals. I did buy them for seven tokens. So I'm going to breed some of them and then get them out of my sight. Because I did not want to spend seven tokens on a pair of stupid snakes. But that's pretty much right there. We even have this little drop down thing. Just in case if you know they need some shade. We could just pull that down and it'll be nice and shady for them. And last but not least, our final habitat in here. This is our Australian walkthrough aviary. Over here, we have Goldian's finches. Got to give a huge shout out to ZZ for him for making these guys. And we also have the rainbow lorikeets by Drac. Just a very simple aviary that I wanted to make with, like, you know, nice wood planking walking you all the way down. A lot of simple things in here. We have to give a huge shout out to Jaguar for all the aviary kind of props and stuff like that. Thought they turned out pretty cool as well. And it's just a beautiful little place to, like, nice, nice place to chill out. And we also have this little look into the bay over here by Haribo. Gotta give a huge shout out to Haribo for these. So we should probably, yeah, for these, we should probably talk about the future of Hope Island Zoo. Uh, I have to give a quick another shout out to Jay Brassic over here for his wonderful props with like, you know, the industrial set. Unfortunately, Jay, listen, I love you, buddy. I'm going to need to make some changes around here, though, because I'm hoping to make a new plaza, a uh, new entrance plaza, rather. Uh, with all the notes from Bro Nation that I have gathered, I'm just going to read them off right here. Number one, expand the port, make it more accessible to transport and guests, either on the same port of call or two separate ones. Prioritize for one. So I think I will do that right over here. Uh, not really sure the shape of it just yet. I think I will have it over there, just so we keep everything clear of the underwater observatory. But I think we will be getting rid of that one right there. I think we may even incorporate that into a little place for, like, you know, guess to maybe take some boats out or something. I don't know. We'll keep that in mind. Maybe a nice little dockyard area. Maybe a nice restaurant or something. Who knows? But um, number two, make sure we do curbs. So if you guys do notice, a lot of our paths don't really have curbs. I will be going through the entire zoo later down the line once my computer is faster to take care of those. Get away from wider paths. Keep one big peri perimeter path. 
around the entire zoo. So I think we already have that kind of taken care of. We have this main path kind of going through the entire zoo. And we're just going to keep it at that and we're going to integrate a lot more smaller paths. Maybe one large plaza, but that's about it. We got to maximize the land that we have in here. Uh, variation of fences, as you guys can probably tell, we have two very different kinds of fences. We have our tall, like thick one, and we have our thin, tiny one. We need to change that up. We got to give like some nice variation to this island. So I will write that into stone right now. We will be working on that later down the line. And we also need a large backstage building, probably connected to our port of call to get our larger animals in. As you guys can probably tell, we do have some larger animals in here, be it our Bactrian camel, who is currently clipping through the wall right there. Don't know what's happening right there. Yeah, you move it, buddy. And we also have our guanacos. While they aren't necessarily the biggest, they still are relatively big. So we do need to account for that. And we probably will turn a little bit of this little jetty into a nice little peninsula. What we're also going to do is add kitchen and food prep over there, offices and administration, and quarantine for large and small animals. That's all going to be backstage. Hopefully I could get that done by myself, but I'm sure I could consult one of our awesome building friends to really help us out for that. Maybe even give them a few animals in the process. That was a little bit of convincing, you know, you know, but moving on from there. Uh... That's pretty much it. Probably add some jetties out here to negate against the water crashing, especially in, <gasps> excuse me, lower traffic areas kind of like here. Uh, probably have one big one going out like that, just as a way to block the waves and whatnot. And probably one over here as well, just have it on both sides, kind of sticking out, but that's essentially that right there. But that's pretty much it for her plans for Hope Island. Um, nothing really too soon. I do have a few animals I have not built for just yet, so I probably will build for them before Season 1 officially ends, but for the time being, we're gonna postpone Hope Island Zoo until we actually do get updates for the entire ZSU community, and once the whole community over there starts to become active again, I will be posting it in my press room just to keep everyone posted on our animals. And that's essentially it. I think we're going to end it with our mascots over here. Yeah, in case if you guys don't know where our dads are, our little mascots, we could get a nice little shot of them right here. Yeah, there we go. But I do want to take some time to thank you guys all for watching. I know 40 minute videos can seem a little daunting, but if you guys did click on here, I really do appreciate it. Hope you guys are so happy with this video. Hope you guys are excited for any new potential DLC news that comes out this week or next week. I don't really know when this video is going to go out, but I do want to first and foremost thank you guys. Um, if you guys are new here and you do like this kind of video, and if you do like this kind of series, definitely do consider subscribing. It always does help me out. I would love to get to 10k by the end of this year in particular, so that'd be a really awesome goal to reach for. But long story short, I do want to thank you guys for stopping by. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Take care. I missed our owl dad. Let's find him first. And have the most awesome of awesome days. Bye-bye now.